Hey, welcome back to the Builder Basement. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick video here on printing ABS parts on my Ender 5 printer. Um, not overly complicated, just something putting it out there for the people that are looking to build a Voron or another machine or even something with ABS. So that requires maybe a decently strong material, not necessarily wanting to do um, PET-G, um, doesn't work with PLA, whatever. And, uh, ABS is an amazing material to work with. Um, I'm going to put something to rest really quick, and that is the fact that ABS is difficult to print. Uh, once you get things tuned in, I'll tell you what, ABS prints probably easier than most any other material I've ever printed with. Um, I started with printing ABS probably about a week or two ago, playing around, tweaking things, getting things working. Uh, and what I'm going to do today is show you those settings I'm using in Cura to, to print ABS on my Ender 5. Uh, while I'm doing that, I'm also going to tell you about what, uh, what I have for updates when I have changes on my Ender 5. So, um, Cura 4.9, um, the go-to, um, just some basic settings and whatnot. And the reason I let out this video is um, I'm putting together my Boron 2.4 and found out that I am missing... I am specifically missing this piece. This is the B drive frame lower. So here's some fun here. All right, so the kit I purchased, and not blaming, not faulting, anything like that. Simple, honest mistake. I have these parts and I was kind of stumped as to what's going on here okay so the only the, the top off the, the tip off I should say that one of these is not like the other is the fact that this one has an additional part on here um, these three do not have that um, these two are exact copies not mirrored nothing they're exact copies so um, this right here has no any, has any, has any parts, everything else are the same. So this part meets up with this just fine. And that becomes my uh, upper. Push that aside. This, however, doesn't work. Couldn't get to work. Couldn't figure out what's going on. So I am printing parts on my Ender 5 to replace parts I have. So it's always good to be able to print something if you need something. Um, I'm going to cut in some roll as to what that looks like. Um, but let's get started on what we have. So uh, my Cura setup is not overly complicated. But I'm going to go through the settings real quick as to how I have it set. This is what's working for me. I think speed of print is important. Um, I'm not going to go into Clipper specifically, uh, which I also am running. Uh, I'm just looking right now at the, uh, the, the actual um, settings I'm using in Cura. So uh, per specification to the Voron dev team, uh, my layer heights, my widths, the amount of walls and the thickness of the walls are all to spec. Uh, basically, four on the wall uh, on the uh, on the wall count. Uh, that's specified. Uh, let's see here. Top surface skin, uh, top layers. I have five. Bottom layers. I have five. I'm using lines. Just basic, basic, basic. Uh, infill density, forty percent. I'm using cubic. Um, they specify maybe four or five different ones you can use. Cubic is good enough for me. And then this is kind of where the magic kind of happens. This is my, my settings utilizing the, um, the Hatchbox, Hatchbox? No, the ESUN, the ESUN ABS uh, that uh, the Voron dev team has suggested to build your ABS parts. Uh, my temperature is 230 degrees all the way through. I keep my build plate at 110 degrees Celsius. Uh, again, that's all the way through. Flow and everything else is at 100%. Uh, I do run a skirt and a brim flow. I do that at 110%. And the reason I'm doing that is I want my, my, my skirt 
uh, or my brim to to really be stuck together um, and that's to help my parts not to peel up around the corners um, so my initial layer is also up at a hundred and five percent and again that's to really get that stuck right down into that bed um, speaking of beds my bed on my under five is a uh, glass bed. It's a Creality glass bed. I am running a Micro Swiss all metal hut end with a direct drive. Um, that probably doesn't have much to do with the printing of ABS. The glass bed, you could go either way. Uh, glass is not known for being a optimal uh, bed for printing ABS, but it works for me and I think it has to do with the thermal mass of the uh, glass that helps out. So with that, let's see here, we also have speed okay so outer wall speed inner wall speed I'm writing these a little high uh, travel speed 200 80 80 80 and 40 on my skirt burn speed um, and two slow layers so let me explain to you why I'm running these high um, there's two things that really cause ABS to warp and while I'm talking about that I'm going to show some warped ABS right there huh so there's two things that really cause ABS to warp that was more than two but two I'm going to talk about um, the the first one is not having a, a heated bed um, ABS almost gets shocked uh, if, it, if it doesn't have a nice constant comfortable temperature it will start to peel up um, it's just the way ABS does it so a nice mass of heat underneath it is required and you do need to get a really good stuck first layer on that to keep it down. Uh, after that, and this is why my settings might be something to really consider if you're if you're having trouble and you're working with Cura. After that, um, the other big things are basically building up enough um, ABS, you know, enough layers to make it so it's harder for that part to curl. You know, a thin part is really easy to bend, really easy to curl. Uh, it's going to come apart pretty easy. So if you're able to build those layers pretty quick, um, so first layer, second layer, and then on top of that, your cubic, everything else, you're going to build up a mat or a structure that's more, you know, less, less bendy. It's harder to bend. The material's going to have trouble doing it. So um, that's why I think speed is kind of important here. and something to definitely take a look at. Uh, my retraction settings, again, that's based on my Micro Swiss, so yours are probably going to be slightly different. And let's see here, my brim. Okay, so again, I talked about this earlier. I am doing a brim for my adhesion. So the reason why I'm doing a brim is, again, to get that platform, that, that, that section of material that's stuck to the bed, really stuck to the bed. It's number one. Um, so I'm running that at a 10 millimeter brim. That's pretty big. Um, and let's see here. I didn't do anything with line counts or anything like that. So um, just a, a 10 millimeter brim, it's pretty big. But trust me, you want something that really sticks to it. Um, outside of that, I don't have anything specific here that really is crazy. Um, you know... When it comes to parts, and I, and I have something here that I've printed, I, I've, I've been able to, most of the parts I've printed are my accent color parts, but I've been able to do a pretty good job of printing out my parts with my Ender. Um, I probably did not have to purchase parts. I did purchase parts, um, but I probably didn't have to. I, I was worried. I honestly was worried. Um, this one really impressed me. Uh, this this is a cover door, obviously, um, but it is flat as flat could be. That's how it printed. Um, no warping whatsoever. Corners are dry. Everything's good. It's a hundred percent. You know, it, it really is a good part, and that's kind of what what the goal is, right? Is good parts. So hopefully you find this video helpful. Uh, if you did, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my video. Watch my Voron build, build video. I'm kind of in the middle of that right now. Uh, and if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything at all, go ahead and leave me some comments, and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. One last time, go ahead and subscribe if you can. Look for subscribers. Going to do more videos. The more subscribers I get. So I will see you next time.